Okay, so now since we have a basic understanding of how the Explode plugin works to cut up something very basic like the cube, now it's time to move to something a little more advanced. And what we're going to be using this time is thinking particles. Uh, for those of you that use Cinema 4D regularly, uh, it comes with a particle module known as thinking particles. This allows you to do all different types of particle work. So one good thing about the Explode plugin is that it is integrated very well with thinking particles, which means that you can create your own custom cuts using thinking particles. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's start out with a cube again. And let's pull up the Explode plugin. And what we want to do now is create some thinking particles to make a custom cut. So to do that, I'm going to use an emitter and the type of emitter I'm going to use is a volumetric emitter. So let's go to the content browser and we want to go to the presets here and I'm looking for thinking particles emitter and we've got a bunch of preset emitters here and I want a volumetric emitter here. So we'll double click that. It'll add the volume emitter to the scene and right now it's not really going to do anything because we have to assign an object. So what I'm going to do is create something perhaps like a sphere. This is going to be what's going to emit the particles. And right now it's a bit too big, so I'm going to take it down to maybe 40. And I'm going to position it right here in the corner. and then raise it up so it'll be up at this top corner there we go and maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger yeah a hundred I guess was just fine in the first place okay so we'll use that okay now we've got to assign this to the emitter so we'll click on the volume emitter and let's take the sphere and make it editable go back to the emitter and we need to say the particle group. Okay, now the first thing is if we take the sphere and drop it into the polygon object and we hit play, you notice we got a bunch of particles that are coming up now. But the problem is they're white. And if you've noticed, when we did the first cut with the cube the first time around, the particles that explode plugin generates are red and that's because they're, ass they're assigned completely different. So what we need to do is we need to tell this volume emitter uh, to use the explode. So to do that we need to go to object, thinking particles, thinking particle settings. This is going to bring up the little dialog box here. And we need to unfold this particle group. It's right now it's set to all and all is white. So if we expand that, you'll notice there's the explode group, which is red. So let's take that red, just grab hold of that explode group there, and drop that over here into the explode, uh, into the particle group. And we can close that out. Now when we click play, now our particles are red. And now the explode plugin will be able to use them. So now we want to determine what we want to create here with these particles. And just to keep it simple, I'm going to go to the type and I'm going to set it to let's try shot. Oh yeah, that's that's quite a bit. Let's go back. Let's change that to rate. And we're going to need to take up the speed on this. So let's go to speed and let's create uh, let's uh increase this to around 60 maybe. Okay. We need to increase the particle count take that up there we go okay so now you can see we've got a very high concentration of particles over here and then over here it's just kind of uh, not so many so I think maybe what I want to do is take up the particle number again to give us some more particles there we go that's much better alright 
So now what we want to do is click on the cube, click on, uh, for the time being I'm not going to put any material or anything on the inside of this. Let's give it the, uh, click the fracture object because we want to place all these pieces in the fracture and we're going to click scatter. Okay, and out of all that, it created a total of 309 pieces. So we'll go back to the beginning of the timeline, and we, you'll notice we've still got a couple little particles left over, and to get rid of that, all you need to do is click on Clear. Okay, so we'll close that out, and just to be sure that we don't get any particles again, go back to the volume emitter and turn that off. And we can just hide that sphere now. So let's take the sphere again, create a copy, or better yet, yeah, let's uh, let's leave this one here. We're going to rename this one here to emitter. Take this sphere and let's pull it up some. Click on the pieces. You'll notice here that our custom cut looks really, really good. Really good, actually. Got all of these little tiny pieces in the corner, and then as it goes out, they get bigger and bigger which looks pretty good. I'm going to click on this, right click, go to MoGraph Rigid Body and let's change the bounce to 0.1 and the friction to 1 and now what we need to do is place the sphere inside of a MoGraph. Let's just put it in a cloner because we want it to be dynamic as well take that up and you notice it's get, it's uh, cloning a bunch of spheres here we don't want those so let's just take this down to one okay take that back up put it back over our corner here that looks pretty good and what we'll do is we'll just take this tag that we put uh, the MoGraph tag rigid body on the pieces and we'll just control click and drag that up to copy it to the cloner object now we want to put in a ground, so I'm just going to go to cube. I'm just going to expand this, scale it up a bit. And then I'm going to hit play. And let's take the timeline up a bit. Hit play. And what we get here, of course, what I forgot to do was take the tag and copy the tag over to the cube to act as the ground. And let's take this up above the grid so we can see a little better. So we'll take the cube, the cloner, and the pieces. And we'll move all that up. Okay, that looks much better. And let's change the shading to ground shading lines. That way we can actually see our pieces where they're at. And we'll hit play. And of course, some of the stuff is already breaking off. But you can see just how good it's starting to look. So let's go back. Let's go over here to the pieces. Click on the MoGraph tag. And right now, the trigger is set to immediately. That's why as soon as we uh, hit the play button for the timeline, they immediately started to crumble. And we don't want that. What we want to change this to is on collision. So now we will hit play again. Cube come, I mean the sphere comes down and crashes into it and smashes it into a bunch of different pieces. Just like that. Now if you really want to get into this a little bit further, what you can do is you can, uh, let's turn this off for the time being. You can go through here and select a bunch of these pieces. Let me go grab the Let's see here. Click there. Let's go over here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. You can select the pieces that are not so small, the larger pieces. You can actually group them inside of another fracture object, and those pieces will be unaffected. So basically, what we can do is let's just grab. 
see here there's so many of them that's the only problem that's one of the setbacks to this is you've got so many pieces you've got to go through them and try to find the ones that you want to that you want to use okay so let's do those there so we, I've got those objects there selected and let's hit alt G to group them now we gotta go find them there we go drag that out and let's create another fracture object control click and drag that up to that one and let's take this these pieces inside this null select them all and drag them into that fracture and we'll call this unaffected and we need to change the MoGraph properties on the trigger to let's try something like at velocity peak hit play and there you go so now what we've got is this cube which instead of everything breaking off now we've just got that corner piece that's breaking off and there you go now like I said depending on how many pieces you have you're gonna have to take some time to go through there and pull out the pieces that you want to put in a separate unaffected um, fracture object so that uh, they won't be affected and they won't start crumbling on you alright so now since we've got a little bit uh, more advanced into this now let's move on over to the part uh, that everyone's been wanting to know how I blew up Apple Soldier 